the uh, this idea came about from uh, between myself and Will, who's running the uh, Epic program or the director of entrepreneurship at iGEM. Um, and we were uh, doing like a just a Zoom call on conferencing that Will's been hosting every month. Um, and last month he was talking mostly about like uh, science fiction um, and the importance of telling good stories um, and how you know we kind of both agreed that in a lot of sci-fi that comes out about synthetic biology there's uh you know maybe the biggest one of the biggest topics is like bioterrorism and how it's like always these warning you know signs of the future um and how much you know there's all these questions in like genetic engineering and it's this like weird thing right um so i think we were we were interested in seeing um you know what else is out there and, and exchanging a few sci-fi recommendations ourselves um and also talking a bit more maybe about uh what optimistic stories we can tell with sci-fi uh that that are about symbio that we can you know share where maybe you know instead of in the future there's a virus that that kills everybody that somebody engineered then maybe in the future there's a uh a way that we've you know cured aging with the synthetic biology solution somehow um but uh that's the that's kind of how this this panel came about um and so you know myself and will both being entrepreneurs quickly kind of <laughs> brainstormed a bit and came up with an idea how maybe we should have like a creative challenge or some kind of competition around this stuff and uh encourage uh you know this whole community of synthetic biologists who um you know love and bio as a science but also maybe do writing or art as a hobby um and encourage them to to create some of their own work maybe that's that tells this uh uh, these kinds of sci-fi stories that that have um, more of what you know what we believe in and not just what like other writers come up with right um, so so that's kind of how this came about um, before we get started I just wanted to do a quick poll of uh, who's watching so I think we have like 27 people in the audience right now um, and I wanted to do a quick thing where we're just in the chat uh, write the city uh, or country that you're from uh the time of day it is and and also what your creative hobby is uh or if you're just here to you know reading is also a hobby if you just observe sci-fi fiction uh that's cool too um so I'll, I'll start things off so montreal uh current time is the morning i'm having breakfast and creative hobby um i'll just put like dance because that's one thing that i'm that i am interested in there we go so if I could get like 30 people all, all chiming in there, that'd be great. Um, cool. So I, I see Tamisha from uh, from Ghana, uh, who's interested in writing in modern calligraphy. Um, Eric from Mexico uh, was writing. Uh, Martin does antique trading. <laughs> That's, uh, yeah. I wonder how, how that, that doesn't go in the sci-fi direction, I guess, but <laughs> it's more like in the past, right? <laughs> uh, Madeline, morning, reading. Yes, good. All right. Cool. Um, and so I know that there is tons of creativity in the item community for sure, because we see these like ridiculous dance videos every year that are all hilarious, and we like to watch the jamboree. Um, so you know we're kind of going beyond that maybe a bit and seeing what else we can produce here. Um, so yeah, Hasnain uh, from Pakistan, six twenty p.m. Writing. Cool. Good. Marina, Russia, 4 p.m. Hobby DIY. Cool, cool. All right, we'll keep we'll keep an eye on those. Um, and I think we'll use the chat more to talk about some like recommendations and stuff that uh, that people have in mind. Um, let's see. So we, we've got a few examples of things to to look at, um, and I've got a couple stories maybe. And, and Guillermo, you have some of your own work, which we maybe will get into uh, get into next. Um, but how about to kick things off? Why don't I finish sharing this this video that I pulled up here, um, which is is called Synthetic Biology. And and if you've hung around, maybe you've seen this video already. But I think this is kind of in line with a bit of like the, you know, optimistic artistic future of Synbio that we can start to think about. Um, and and so this, I think that kind of you know lines up pretty well with like this optimistic future of what we could do with Synbio. Uh, of course, you know we're a long ways away from having 
bees that you can drive like a car or something like that, or like jellyfish that go through space. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, that's how far we can let, so we can let our imaginations go here. This isn't, uh, we don't need to talk about feasibility in, in this panel session for the next like 20 minutes or so we can, we can dream. Um, so, so now maybe, uh, Guillaume, do you want to talk a bit about, uh, about your work and uh, uh, tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, sure, sure. Um, so I'm, I work with uh, After iGen, as some of you may know. Uh, and I also, I also run a startup called Tabiru. We develop affordable <coughs> educational technology. And my hobby is writing. And it has been writing since I was a kid. And uh, I, I write a lot of, of uh, science fiction. Not always about synthetic biology, because I, I started writing before I started doing synthetic biology. Um, and I, I wrote a book that is very, has a very ugly cover. It's in Portuguese, so literally you uh, won't read it and figure out how bad I am. Um, but yeah, I write sci-fi and it, it, it's my hobby, basically. Cool, so tell us, uh, maybe tell us a bit about this, the book or, or what it's about. How does the, the plot go? So um, basically, the idea behind writing it is that uh, I would like to um, look in the future, like 100 or 200 years. Um, and as you, you were talking, usually we see dystopias because it's uh, easier to build conflict if the yeah. scenario is in conflict. Uh, but this is a utopia, like what is the best world that we can in 200 years? So basically, the plot is about um, an island, a country, a continent, whatever, um, that undertook an uh, industrial revolution 500 before the rest of the world, and they isolated themselves, and they developed their science and tech, and they just exist, <laughs> and some folks try to find this place. Uh, someone in medieval times found it and described it, like described the current world with the eyes uh, of someone from 500 years ago. So he was talking about monsters made of steel and glass, and this is where we live. Um, and basically, there, there are no stadiums, and they try to find this place. And then they can't find it, but uh, the people living in this country think, OK, let's bring them out. And then they just visit this place. And uh, it, it has a lot of symbio-inspired scenarios, like uh, basically they rebuild uh, the animals that we kill, uh, we may go extinct, like Revive and Restore, that is sponsoring oh, yeah. them this year to try to do, but they, they kind of do it there. Um, yeah, so basically they are now inside this country, and uh, they can't leave because they saw the future. And basically this uh, is kind of the plot. Yeah. Interesting, that sounds like fun. Uh, and I yeah. guess it's not translated to, to English yet, so I, I no, no. maybe it won't. <laughs> I'll figure that out. Yeah. Um, but yeah. if you have a if you have a link to it, or or uh, uh, Isabella in the chat is asking what the book's name is, um, you can post that up there, and then uh, people can check it out. Um, and maybe we'll get a translation at some point. Yeah. Let's see. Let's see. It's uh, we'll journey yeah. to the unknown island. Journey to yeah. the unknown island. Yeah, because it's an unknown island. But basically, it was like uh, for fun. Like uh, I didn't make money out of it. And just a hobby. Yeah, yeah, and that, that's super cool. And that's what, uh, you know, I think that's kind of what we're trying to engage here with, uh, you know, the conversation that we're having and, and also my outlook on this whole thing. Like, I don't, you know, I'm not a professional writer. I'm not a professional dancer. I'm not a professional artist in any way. Um, but I do, you know, I do have hobbies. And, and it seems like a lot of people here have hobbies too. And it's be super fun to kind of like, you know, have this this casual exchange where we're just talking about sci-fi, exchanging each other's work. Um, you know, one of the ideas that came about when Will and I were talking was about doing a short story competition maybe this year somehow, like something casual where we can uh, share share some of this and uh, and create some of these stories. Um, so to me, that'd be super fun. Um, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. You guys can tell me how you feel about it. Um, let's see. So uh, maybe let's get into some recommendations. Um, who's uh, uh, so I've got some recommendations of sci-fi that I've read recently. Um, Pierre, maybe do you want to do you want to start with some recommendations? Okay. Uh, so I, actually, the the recommendation that I usually give is a two hundred years old book called the, the Frankenstein or uh, the Modern Prometheus. I, I don't know if you ever read 
the actual book, like we, we see the monster. It's not even called Frankenstein. Frankenstein is the scientist that made it. But usually we see the monster in, in popular culture. Uh, but the actual book is very good. It, it is talking about engineering life 200 years before CRISPR was a thing. Um, and it's very interesting because it, it, it talks, like, it uses the, the, the symbiotic, you can talk about symbiotic 200 years ago, but it uses the scientific scenario to talk about society. Uh, so basically, it, uh, things go bad, and this is not a spoiler because it's 200 year old book, so, <laughs> uh, but things go bad not because of the science, but because of how society reacts to it, how the, the science, scientist itself behaves. It goes bad, uh, bad because of prejudice, uh, and etc. So I, I think it's it's a very important book for anyone that is interested in, in science fiction because it, it's very good in using this uh, platform, this scenario, to talk about ourselves. And I think this is very powerful in any sci-fi uh, work. Yeah, and I'm guessing in the past 200 years, there's probably a lot of language translations of that book. So maybe that's one that everybody can get access to, right? Um, so my, my recommendation is uh, a more recent one, um, which I actually heard about it uh, from George Church. Um, so I guess that's a good good recommendation, maybe. Um, but uh, it's a series of uh, books uh, that uh, written by the author uh, Xi Xin Liu. Um, who is a Chinese sci-fi author, and uh, this is like, I think it's like a world famous book now, but um, it's called Three Body Problem, uh, and it's a super interesting book. Uh, there's a lot of twists and spoilers, which I won't get into, but uh, it kind of, you know, uh, tells this interesting sci-fi story and gets into, um, I would say less in bio, there's some like biotech elements to it that are that are pretty interesting and super cool. Um, but it's a it's a really interesting way of thinking about technology and, and the whole story kind of starts with, um, uh, you know, maybe being centered around around Chinese culture as like, you know, maybe the way that, you know, the setting that it occurs in the whole like story is kind of written from that, uh, uh, that country. So I think it's, it was interesting for me in that sense, because I feel like a lot of you know, sci-fi that I had read before or like other kinds of things like, uh, or, or sci-fi series or whatever, they're usually based around like the North American context. Uh, and it's really nice to see or read something that's from a completely different perspective, right? Um, so that's why uh, I would, I'd be interested in, in, yeah, reading your book, Garam, and see, see what, what, what elements of, of your culture and your upbringing that are different from, from mine that, that maybe show up in your book. Um, so, so yeah. Um, I'll write some of these books down in, in this in this chat. So, um, and if anybody has any recommendations, anything you've read recently that you think is super cool, um, post it up in the chat. Uh, and I think we'll we'll spend the rest of the time maybe talking a bit about uh, you know maybe a creative challenge or or also talking about more recommendations. There's a few other links that we've got that we can look at that are just going to be fun, fun cool things to check out. Um, Biopunk style, Eric and Tuna. Eric, do you have any recommendations for biopunk style style books, or 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 films, or or whatever? I guess anything goes. Actually, I have one here. Oh yeah. Um, it's it's a bit like there is always this discussion <laughs> regarding the limits of science fiction. Maybe it becomes it becomes too um, fantasy. <laughs> So this is a young adult, uh, the Leviathan. This is in Portuguese, but uh, it's Leviathan in English. Uh, it's a young adult series. Uh, I have daughters. Uh, it's basically a World War One scenario that you have. Uh, some of the countries have steampunk machines, and England, England, France, and Turkey. No, Tur Turkey is Turkey is mixed, or the Ottoman Empire. Uh, but some countries have biopunk machines, like uh, living uh, floating whales that work like airships. It, it, it's it's funny. It's uh, yeah, it's young adult fiction. Uh, maybe some of you in the chat read it. it cool. It's fun. What's the title of it again? It's uh, the Vietnam series. It, it's three books: the Vietnam, Beyond, right, and Odious. Cool. And what's the? Uh, let me just write down the author here. So it's Scott Scott Westerfield. Okay. 
Oh yeah, Sarah Farr uh, says uh, anything from uh, Ted Chang's short stories. Um, that's that's one that I've I need to read now too. It's uh, uh, another friend of mine suggested that I read some Ted Chang stuff. Um, and those of you who don't know who I guess uh, let me think. Let's go to Ted Chang's website. I think it's a good example of some more yeah recent interesting sci-fi stuff. Um, but I think he one of his recent books was uh, it became a, a Hollywood film arrival. Yeah, that's the one. There you go. Okay, thanks, thanks, Dara. Got my back. Um, <laughs> and Daniel Daniel Montoya says in the in the chat that uh, a Contact by Carl Sagan uh, is a good optimistic yeah. outlook of of science and international collaboration. That's cool. So um, let's go to a couple other places on the internet and uh, and see what else we've got in our list. So, all right, Daniel also says Andy Weir is a good one. Uh, the Martian, Artemis. Oh yeah, The Martian. That's a good. Uh, uh, that's a good show. <laughs> that's fun. Um, um, so Will's asking us also to go to check out Neo Life Visions, uh, and this is a. This is brand new, I think. Um, new Life as a whole is like pretty recent in, in their whole development, but I think it was just some people from uh, Wired magazine that that started up this new media channel. I guess they wrote this book that's that's all about um, uh, you know same like technology, Silicon Valley style media, um, but more focused on like life sciences and hence medical biology. So I think quite a few people, I'm watching this, I think I've got a book that's on its way. I haven't read it yet because it hasn't shipped yet, um, but that's something that's uh, that's coming up. Um, another link that we got left with was uh, for iGEMS 2019, uh, the Stockholm team. So I don't, know if I, I don't think I saw anybody from Stockholm in the chat yet, um, but they put together an art exhibition. Um, and I think I've seen a few, uh, in the history of iGEM, we've had like some past uh, like art exhibits or um, even like an art and design track at, at some point. Um, I remember seeing that and that has always kind of come and gone. I think I think iGEM has had this funny, uh, maybe back and forth of trying to figure out how to integrate more of this like art and creativity into the competition, right? Um, but here you can see, and there's a oh, they made a booklet for the whole the whole exhibit. So this is all about some technology. Um, I think it says that it was hosted in a old nuclear reactor. So that's pretty cool. That'd be fun to visit. Uh, and then they've got the list of, of artists and the different different pieces. So anyways, you can check that out um, if you're. Uh, this is more yeah, going beyond beyond writing now. I think we're getting into like more or other stuff. Um, and there's one more that uh, that Will, Will had sent, which is biofiction.com. And I hadn't heard about this until Will sent me this. Or I think I've heard about it, but I haven't watched any of the videos here. Um, but this seems seems great. It's like a science art uh, film festival. Uh, and so give it a second to load. Um, I'll post that link in the chat too. So here you can you can go and there's like yeah 2011 and 2014 um, was about biology, um, and uh, I guess yeah it's a short film competition so I guess you can dig around and see what uh, what you can find there, um, and and that's what we got so far. So I think that's that pretty much wraps it up for uh, I think what we were hoping to get through with this session and. Um, uh, yeah, cool. Um, just reading the chat a bit. So, so I think the, the open question here is like, you know, what do you guys think of this stuff? Uh, is this something that you really want to engage more in? Like, would you be down for like a creative competition? Uh, maybe you want to help organize something like that. Maybe you want to help judge it, or uh, maybe you just want to hang out and like have fun and just talk about sci-fi stuff because it's just like fun to do, right? Um, so, what do you guys? What do you guys think? What do you think, Yaren? Yeah, we even talked about this other. Oh. I think I've only talked with Will. Yeah, this yeah. Time, so. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a great idea. Actually, I, I had a project called Biofund Global Challenge on Juggle, the Tomar platform. Oh yeah. Um, 
Yeah. We, we actually gave up because of the whole pandemic, <laughs> because we thought. So usually uh, answering that question about Biopan, Biopan usually has this um, bad future vision, like this topic future. So we thought that it wasn't a good idea to talk about this topic future regarding biology <laughs> with the world that we are right now. I think uh, the, what you were talking about, about pushing for this optimistic vision is much more interesting. So yeah, I think it's amazing. I, I think it's like um, um, a short tale or um, like I, I think we can split it because it, there are so many different and exciting things that we can do, um, like that we can we can divide this initiative in, in uh, art section and etc. It, it's amazing. I yeah, love yeah. to, to do that. Cool, cool. And I see Tamisha in the chats is. Uh, uh, help to organ, yeah. Happy to help organize and and judge, uh, maybe even compete. So so we've got now we've got we're four people that are that are interested in this this idea. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's great. yeah. And we saw I think when I was talking because like I said I'm I'm coming more from a, a less from writing more from dance or, or circus arts actually. But um, oh I see Randy Redberg. Hey. Uh, yeah, exactly, Randy. This is this is part of it where it's like you know, people have have more time to sit down and write stuff at home, right? <laughs> um, but uh, but we can definitely do open this up. Uh, we can we can have it just be remote writing. We can open it up to a lot of other fields. Uh, maybe we treat it as like a super casual thing. Um, uh, I was wondering if it's would it make sense? Do you guys think it would be a good idea to do a uh, Slack channel on this? Would this be the next step for this thing? Should we make a Slack channel and invite some some friends and uh, uh, and, and keep the discussion going? So I think, you know, um, I'm glad we had this conversation today just to see like who's keen on this, who of the iGEM community are like, you know, in the same frame of mind of like, you know, creative and wanting to do stuff here. Uh, and it sounds like we have something going here. So, um, but I'm pretty excited to see how far we can go with this and, and see how much of a community we can build around, um, you know, this particular idea of like creating sci-fi, uh, content and art that's related to to symbio and, and encouraging more of that like you know uh, more more scientists who have creative art skills that uh, that love to practice their art and and also do science and then <laughs> oh cool and here's some some more tidbits from Randy for 2021 uh, one of our pillars is to invite other groups um, so art and design groups will be welcome cool cool. Okay, 2021. Well, so this will this will be the ramp up. We'll, we'll get some. We'll start start here, and then and by 2021 we'll have like a whole like competition just for this. This would be great. Be great. Um, but we're in there. We're in our last couple minutes. Um, if if anybody has any more recommendations, doing so. Uh, I I think sci-fi has two main powers. One of them is to look at the future that we don't want to exist, like Gataka. Gataka was talking about uh, genetically engineered people 20 years ago. And now this is a possibility. And this allows us to discuss um, discuss what can exist before it exists. It allows us to discuss uh, social impact, and political impact, and etc. And I, I think this is great. This is amazing. And the, the other aspect of sci-fi is the wonder aspect. So uh, humanity has been looking to the stars since the stone age and we look to them and we feel small and at the same point we feel part of this bigger thing and then when sci-fi about space exploration started to exist everyone was super excited about it because it was talking about the unknown it was talking about adventure it, it was talking about exploring and uh, it, it relates a lot from uh, with this feeling that we have uh, when we look to the stars in the sky. When we talk about biology science fiction, like life or whatever you call it, uh, it, it is different because it's not talking about an, a no that exists out there. It talks about ourselves. It talks about us, what we can be, what means to be human, what means to be uh, part of humanity. Are we a multicellular organism composed by seven billion cells? Or are we fungi fighting in a petri dish for resources and killing each other? So uh, biology, uh, when we talk about the future of biology, uh, we talk about understanding more ourselves 
And this is extremely powerful. And this is uh, extremely inspiring. And this can bring much more people to science. And this is what we want in the end of the day. Because then we can build this future uh, earlier and enjoy it. Oh, no, we have until 10. OK, so we can hang out a bit longer. Cool. Um, all right. <laughs> Uh, and so that was a super cool thought, Guillermo. I think that's that's super important uh, and really defines like what we're looking for here, right? Recommendations. Anybody else have any any books or any stories that they love uh, that are that are sci-fi? So I, I know that Hasling writes poems about science. Ah. Uh, Hasling, you're being called out. Yeah. Let's see if he shows so up in the chat. Oh, there you go. Opera of science All right. So here is here is one of Hasnain's poems. Parasites have the right to live. It's a really nice image here. Parasites have the right to live. Here's Hasnain. Cool. Hey, Hasnain. 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 How are you? Which one? Which one do you have on your end right now? So I've got your website open. Uh, this one is parasites have the right to live. Um, okay. Do you want to do you want to read one of these, or right. do you want to just like? If, if if you want me to read the parasite one, I can read that, and then I can tell you a little bit about why I started it. So this one goes as an uninvited guest that may stay for too long. It has a host in front with within which it belongs, known for all things devastating, known for all that is wrong, can hardly be seen with eye. It has wiped millions from the face of Earth. Noticed by many, understood by few. They play important roles, never taken in view. Victims of biased haste, these parasites, too beautiful. They have a beautiful side. I wrote this a long time ago. This is the first time I'm reading it after, I guess, 2018. Yeah. <laughs> 2017, yeah. Great. Great. Cool. I know you wrote a whole bunch more about that. So that, that's this is nice. This is super cool, and this is like you know I love it. This is what this is all about, right? Uh, is to to see what uh, what creative talent we have here and uh, and share these stories. Yeah. So thanks, Hasan. Like, this is great. I started it like I started it while I was doing item as well because I wanted a place. So I I had been writing poetry for a long time, and that was basically dystopian. And I was like I should somehow collate both my love for science and poetry to the same place. So I came up with this. I was thinking about what should have been the title of it. And I was like, since opera has this is a, a sense of where you are submerged in music and submerged in a feeling, and that's, that's the same that you can find in poetry as well. And having it collate with science would be a good idea too. So that's going back to it in 2017. I haven't been able to follow up on it. I wrote, I guess, seven or eight poems back at the time. But I guess I might, if, if the challenge comes up again, that the one that you have made, I might start writing it again. Yay! Yeah. It is kind of like symbio related and, and does get into a bit of the future. Um, and this is a, a short podcast uh, from 99% Invisible. Um, that inspired me a lot uh, a few years ago, actually. Um, but it was about uh, storage of nuclear waste and and how to create future warning systems uh, that that will warn people about you know where nuclear waste is stored, so that you know a hundred thousand years in the future, people don't accidentally dig uh, somewhere and find nuclear waste. Um, and you should you should listen to it yourself because um, it's an interesting story to tell. Um, but basically. One of the outcomes of this this story is that uh, actually maybe it's a I don't want to give this spoiler here. Okay, anyways, go go check it out. You'll you'll enjoy it. But the the solution one of the solutions is is genetic engineering. So you can imagine how you one might uh, use genetic engineering to uh, to figure out how to send a message uh, more than a hundred thousand years in the future. Um, and and that's this is like yeah pretty creative. Um, but this is a real problem back in the uh yeah in the 1990s um people were like you know asking writers and artists and stuff to come up with solutions for this this concept of sending messages that far in the future because uh uh you know that's longer than human history there's no record of any messages that have been sent that far uh from our past right so this was posted uh so nana posted this nana oye dayan from uh 
actually, I'm not sure where you're from, but I'll scroll up in the chat and find it. I'm out of stuff, I think. This is this is great. Uh, I've got a, my recommendations are out. Uh, anybody else have any more recommendations on, on things they saw recently? Uh, post them up. Gear, I'm got anything else that you want to say? That's it from my side. Oh, actually, if, if someone knows a role-playing game about uh, synthetic biology, I would love that. Because I play role-playing games, and I've been looking for something like this, and I still haven't found. So if you know, let me know. Role playing games for sci fi. Okay. And speaking of games, I guess there's, uh, I don't know if there's anything, any particular board games or like video games that people have in mind um, that kind of like, you know, uh, uh, line up also with like the Symbio or sci fi theme. Uh, I mean, Pandemic is a pretty popular board game, but that's that's just about, that's like real life now, I guess. It's not like <laughs> you have to play a game to stand up there, right? <laughs> It's a very fun board game too. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I played the Bioshock series when I was growing up too. That was yeah. a whole the yeah. whole there's a that's more of like a dystopian future kind of like weird stuff going on. But uh, the theme in that is that you have plasmids, which like you as a character you're running around and you, you gain plasmids, uh, and that gives you the ability to like shoot lightning out of your hands and stuff, right? Which is you know, iGem Project's idea number one is to engineer yeah. my lightning hands, right? Uh, or like laser eyes and stuff. <laughs> and other for me. And well, if you if you think like this, Resident Evil is also like symbiotic. Resident Evil, oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, true, true. Yeah. All these zombie ones are, are kind of symbiotic yeah. or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this is super great. So, so if you guys haven't seen it yet, or if you're joining late, uh, we've got a Slack channel now. I think we'll try and post up these recommendations in the chat there. Um, but it sounds like we've got you know some people coming together who are who are keen to. Uh, uh, to to organize something here, or to at least inspire each other, or just to like hang out and share sci-fi uh, sci-fi stories that that we love, um, and and so it's super nice to kind of like gather a community of people who are you know similar in mindsets of science and then of the future, um, and uh, and talk about this 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 idea of like you know what creative talent can uh, do we have and what can we do. Um, and uh, and so keep an eye out. I think we'll uh, we'll keep the chat going in the Slack as the next step. Uh, maybe we'll start hosting some other meetings or sessions to discuss something uh, if we really want to organize organize something new. Um, but uh, uh, there's a lot of like interesting opportunities here, maybe, uh, and a lot of interest. I think so. Um, uh, I love it. And and thanks for coming, Guillermo. That was that was awesome. I'm glad you. Uh, thanks for sharing your book. Thanks for sharing your stories. Thanks, Hassanane, for like reading your poem. That was super cool. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, good to good to see you all. See you online. That was amazing. Well, let's make this work, man. Yeah, yeah. Let's work Hi, everybody. <laughs>